Hello, everybody. It's the coach. This is Madden 20 on EA Sports. Coming up next, we've got what should be a good one between the Denver Broncos and the New England Patriots. I'll be back with you again with scores around the league at halftime. But kickoff right around the corner. And standing by to call the action, here are Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, Coach, thank you. EA Sports coverage of the National Football League brings us to Gillette Stadium in Foxborough, Mass. The scene a few moments ago, here it is. It's unlike any other in sport as both teams made their way out of the tunnel. These folks are fired up as their guys are ready to do battle between the Denver Broncos and the New England Patriots. With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, And Charles, we look at this Patriots team entering play. They come in off a loss in the opener last week. That one was on the road. Now they get their first taste here of home cooking. And what they're hoping to do is feed off the energy of the home crowd. Great tailgate, great fan support. Let's see if they can put it to good use. Meanwhile, for the visiting Broncos, they were winners last time out, so they'll be looking, Charles, to make it two in a row. And what I enjoyed when I watched their game tape and their victory last week is they put it together in every phase. Good offense, good defense, and some key plays on special teams. Let's see if they can get that second win in a row. First game's out of the way. Time to buckle down for the long season ahead. And we're off in week two. This fielded at the two. And he'll get across the 20 before he's brought down at about the 23-yard line. So here come the Patriots now on offense. And they're led out by a guy who's done just about everything you could ever imagine to do in this league, the great Tom Brady. It's been a lot of fun watching him develop in his career. But that will to win, he's had that probably since birth, and it transmits itself throughout his entire ball club. Watching him play, it can be an absolute joy unless you're on the other team. They'll run it here. This is James White calling no gain on the game's first play, and it's second down now. Now let's give you a look here at the New England offense. I love the versatility of Marcus Cannon. He can play guard, he can play tackle. I think his footwork has really improved during his time in the NFL. He has one of the better backstories that you're going to get. This is a guy who was diagnosed with cancer, has beaten that, and now is one of the better players in the NFL. Looking to throw on second down. Brady. Oh, a battle fought. 17 yards there for the Patriots as they've got themselves a first down. They've got good playmakers on the offensive side of the ball. I don't know what happened last week to, to really hurt their performance and, and hold down their production, but I would dare say that this week in practice, there's a lot of talk about how they're going to increase their proficiency. Yeah, that was a good start getting the playmakers involved. You mentioned that to me pregame. That's what they did there. Yeah, I think a lot of people think the coaching staff really gets on them, and that's how they motivate them. Most of these guys are self-motivated. They have a lot of pride in their performance. Well, look now at our starting defense currently number one in the NFL against the run. And that's a ranking that feels good, right? To be number one and be the top of your profession. But here's the problem. It's only week one. One week, yeah. Can they do it 15 <laughs> more times? If so, then we really got something to talk about. That's the challenge. Coming to you, coming to you. On second down, they'll run with White. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. That'll be a New England first down, a gain of 12. That's his longest run of the first quarter. And, Charles, we talked before the game about them needing to establish the run game. They'll be looking for more of that. And they got to the perimeter. So that tells me that that's part of the game plan of what they want to get done today. So they'll have some complimentary runs where he'll run it to the inside. But it appears that when they want the big yardage, they think they can get to the outside and make it happen. Give him a couple on the catch. It's second and eight. What a catch and one-handed, and I'm starting to lose my awe about the play, and maybe I shouldn't. How much of this is the player? 
How much of it is the glove? Well, those gloves, they do have a little grip to them, they? Don't get they get a little extra tackiness to them now, and I know the guys in the NFL, the competition committee, some other places, they're talking about examining those gloves to see if they're having too much of an effect on the game. Come on out here, come get some. Come get some. Come on here, come get some. 50. Throwing is Brady on third down. Looking left side, and he's got a man. It's Wells. Good defense holds him to only a yard, and it'll be fourth down. One hallmark of good defenses is understanding the game, understanding positioning, and tackling immediately in the secondary after catches. I think we just saw that on display right there. Got to him before he ever had a chance to think about turning it upfield. So here are the Broncos backed up to start their initial drive. They will be led out by a second-round pick in 2019. Out of Missouri, it's Drew Locke. and the Broncos going to come up first and 10 at their own 11. They'll run for the first time with Phillip Lindsay. And a short gain here across. Give him a couple on the carry there. Second and eight. The offensive lineup now, and the guy we highlight, Emmanuel Sanders. You can use him in any spot as a wide receiver. In the slot, out wide. It doesn't matter. He just makes plays. run good for two here's second and eight on second down here's lock and the catch made this is emmanuel sanders and he works it across the 25 before being tackled give him 14 yards there and a denver first down the numbers for sanders last week Five catches, 107 yards. And one of the top receiving games in the league, week one, and they're expecting those types of games from him each and every time out. They're going to need that from him if they want to make a move towards a league title. Throwing on first down is Locke. Got a man open. It's Sutton. That throw good for four. It's second down. The starters defensively now for the Patriots. And they're a tough unit to throw against. Currently fourth toughest in the NFL. And hey, they were stingy in the opener. Didn't allow much of anything at all through the air. So now they come into week two saying, hey, let's see if we can do even better. Let's go ahead and get to that number one spot. Four yards on that last completion, so that sets up second and six. On second down, a run with Lindsey. And he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. Seven yards there and a first down. Boy, he does it at a high level, doesn't he? Because when I watch him, I think of his vision. Straight ahead, peripheral. Also has that sense of where holes are going to be before they actually open. I think that helps set him apart from many of the other backs in the league. So here's a first and 10 hey, at the 38. Mike, 53. Mike, 53. Let's go, Pete. Now a first carry for Derrick Henry. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. Ready for the second quarter, and it's our visitors with the football as they've got it with a first and ten. Broncos football as we begin quarter number two as they've got it with a first and ten. So into Pat's territory now. Here's first and ten at the 48-yard line. On first and ten, it's Lindsey. He'll get about four here down to the 43-yard line. When we see those runs to the perimeter, when we see those runs to the edge, we think about big breakers, don't we? In this case, it was a modest gain, but it does open up possibilities here on second down. Hey, 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 
to throw on second and six. Lock, and that gonna be incomplete. A lot of contact, no call, and it's third down. You get a tight end like this, and you know he's used to dishing out punishment, but here, he's the one who has to absorb the contact, and as a result, unable to hold on to the football. <laughs> Throwing his lock on third down. And that will be incomplete. Those passes out that far wide always make you hold your breath a little bit. Felt like it was in the air for a while. What it does is it allows a defender to gain some ground, come from a long distance, and have a chance to affect the pass. So on now is Brandon McManus. He has hit from as far away as 57, but that was in Denver. They spot it on the midfield stripe, so it is a 60-yard attempt here. And that right there is something we've seen, oh, I don't know, 15 times in NFL history. That will officially go down as a 60-yard field goal. And everything has to be absolutely perfect for this to have any chance. He's got to get it out low and really drive through it. And I tell you, that was one heck of a kick, one heck of a decision on the sideline to even try it as well. After splitting the uprights, McManus to kick it away. And that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback. Out comes the New England offense to see what they can do this time. This one a little slow to get cooking. Just a 3-0 scoreline as they begin with a 1st and 10. Brady and the Patriots now 1st and 10 at their own 25-yard line. Throwing now is Brady. And his guys are going to take over at the 31-yard line. He was looking for Edelman there. Well, this is a defense that can confuse even the best of quarterbacks with their zone schemes. And here you've got a linebacker that's going to stay at home and just sit down in that zone. And this one basically comes right to him. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. After the turnover, here's Locke. But that's complete to Sanders. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. One of the selling points of the in route is it gives the quarterback a really nice sight line to his receiver and almost on a direct shot, able to throw the ball into the middle of the field and have a great chance of success as they did on that play. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. That one going for a gain of 11 and a Bronco first down. Tremendous blocking by the interior of the offensive line. They didn't just gash him there. They blasted a gaping hole for him to gallop through. I think if he comes back to the huddle, he better be giving them a whole lot of credit and thanking them for that much space to rumble. On first down, right back to Lindsey. And the second wave of tacklers is going to get him as they stop him behind the line. That's going to go as a loss of one on first down. Michael Bennett's versatility, being able to play any position along the defensive front, allows him to make those types of plays. He finds good matchups and gets into the offensive backfield. And there it works for a tackle for loss. Hey, hey, hey. Keep him, keep him. On second and 11 now. Lock. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Dante Hightower coming in for the sack from his linebacker spot. That's a pretty darn good start to his season, huh? A sack in the opener, and the second one here. That tells you about his offseason. He came in determined to have a big year, and it's paying off. Need something from deep in the bag of tricks here after first and second down went backwards. It's third and very long. On third and long, it's Locke. This is the tight end fan. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. You know I'm going to lean towards the defender, right? You know I'm going to do that. I know. That's a tough situation for him as I see it. But the truth of the matter is, that ball was not streaking towards him. Had a little arc on it. He's got to find a way to get his head around to make a play on the football. Down. 60 outlaw. They'll try and run it in with Janovich, the fullback. It'll be a gain of five there as they move closer. It's second and goal. 
And there's the pickup you want on first down. All offenses say, you get me four on first down, we'll take it. How about if you get five? They'll really be happy. They come out here in the eye. Come on. Second quarter, two minutes remain. Three nothing, our score. A reminder coming up at halftime, we'll head to Orlando. Standing by there, Jonathan Coachman. He'll have stats and scores from around the NFL in his second week. And he'll get in. Touchdown, Denver. Derrick Henry. His third touchdown now on the year. And the Broncos push further out in front. Heck of a start to his season. He had two touchdowns in the opener last week. Another one here in week two. Well, I don't want to call him a touchdown machine this early, but sometimes you get locked in, you know, and you feel good about things. You get into that zone, and those touchdowns come in bunches. He may be off to that kind of a start. It's like he was shot out of a cannon. I would imagine success this early, great momentum going forward for the rest of the year. He keeps this up. They'll soon be chanting MVP anytime he touches the ball. Extra point from McManus is good. And the lead grows to 10-0. So this drive spans seven plays. And Derrick Henry able to finish it off with a touchdown run. After the touchdown, here's McManus now to kick it away. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. Out comes the New England offense to see what they can do this time. And they're in an early hole. The first drive, they threw the interception. That led to a touchdown. So decent-sized deficit early on. It is, but I think you hit the key words, early on. So they have to decide, do we even need to change game plan? Or do we just need to execute better and try and get back in this game? Trying to shake off the interception. He'll look to throw. Wide open receiver complete. And they're going to have this across midfield and inside the 45. Getting it to him in space pays off big time. That winds up going for 31. Now a pass dropped off here for James White. Give him six on the play, and it'll make it second down. Everyone's got to be able to catch the football. Doesn't matter what position you play, but if you're on offense, be aware a ball may come your way. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Von Miller doing what he does best with a sack. Now the Patriots going to use one of their timeouts as they'll stop it with exactly a minute to go before halftime. And it looks like we've got a dime set here defensively. Six DBs in the game. From the gun, it's Brady. Throwing right, and that's complete. Try! And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. Now the Patriots will use the second of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. Brady, after the pick on the last drive, three for three to start this drive. It's first and 10. To throw is Brady. Looking end zone, but it's incomplete. Nikhil Harry was the intended target. That'll bring up second down. This defense has been very disruptive early on as they force another one to go awry. Seems to be the front and the back end. Pass rush, they've been able to get home, and they're taking the ball away in coverage as well. I love how you put it together. The front and back working in sync, only way to play good defense. Another throw on second down, and this one incomplete as well. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have them looking at third and ten. Again, it's Brady. Patriot touchdown. Josh Gordon, his first touchdown here of the new campaign. As they are now on the board here in the first half. The way this one was going, you just got the sense they needed something before half. They've at least got something on the board now. Still trailing, but a good sign. That takes me back to our preseason tour of NFL camps. You remember we, we talked with that one coach who said his emphasis this year was scoring in the last two minutes yep. of a half, heading into the locker room. This hits it right there. Take that momentum, take that good feeling, and take the locker room, regroup, and start over. 
They got it here. They did indeed. A lot of football. Full half to be played. Following the touchdown, Badgley out there to kick it away. This one fielded at the five. And he'll take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. Meanwhile, in Los Angeles, an update from there. It's the Chargers out to an early lead. Phillip Rivers with two first-half touchdown passes. And Denver getting set to take the field. You're under a minute to go here in the half. Field position not really in your favor, but still time to try and move the ball and get in field goal range. Yeah, you got the lead. It's a, definitely a thought. Let's go ahead and try and increase it. But at the same time, I don't like the odds. I don't like where they are on the field. Got the lead. They've done well in the first half. Don't mess it up and go into halftime looking at each other wondering what if. He'll be hit down at the 33, five yards on the play. They'd love to just strike back with a touchdown right here, and if it's a long play, so be it. But the main goal, get a couple of first downs, run some plays, run some clock, allow their defense to get a chance to catch their breath, settle down, and relax a little bit after they just gave up the score. And obviously not fooling anybody here as they stop him behind the line of scrimmage. So we've hit halftime. Just a field goal separating these two teams at the break. As we'll get you down the coast to Orlando for Jonathan Coachman at REA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, we'll get you back to you and Charles in a bit. But first, it's time for a trip around the NFL following an eventful opening weekend. Let's see what's happening in week two. We'll begin up at Bank of America Stadium in Uptown Charlotte. And the Panthers are out in front as they play the second quarter. Curtis Samuel, a touchdown reception. From there, we head all the way out west to see what's happening with the L.A. Chargers. And they've got the lead in their matchup with the Tampa Bay Bucks. Keenan Allen, two touchdown catches on the afternoon. Finally, we finish at MetLife Stadium to see what's going on with the Jets. And that game all tied up as they do battle with the visiting Raiders. In the game you're watching, it's been Drew Locke with a strong first half. His guys lead, though by only a field goal, still anybody's game. As we send it back to Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Thank you, sir. A field goal separates these two teams as we come back for this second half. This one taken just inside the 10. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. Here comes the Broncos offensive unit here as they'll have it first to begin this third quarter. They have the lead now. They'll be looking for some separation here as we begin the third quarter. I like the way you turn that because now I think they go a little bit deeper into their playbook. They like what they did in the first half. That worked okay. But in order to get the separation that you just talked about, change things up a little bit. Change your tendencies. Try and hit them a little bit more with some things they didn't see in the first half. Let's we'll see if they do just that. The last run got a couple. Here's second and eight. Now Locke throwing on second down. He's got his big tight end, Fant. And he gets this deep into Patriot territory. A huge play there for Denver. 55 yards. Excellent execution, and now they're set up nicely. Are they ever? Red zone? I wonder what the next play call is going to be because after a big play like that, a lot of teams like to use the momentum to launch another one. So on the other side of the field now, it's first and 10 as they've got things rolling on this drive. They'll toss it to Henry. And effective running here. He'll take it down inside the 10. It's a six-yard pickup, but it gets him to second and four. Despite the blitz, they're still able to pick up a nice, solid gain. The disadvantage of blitzing often alters the normal spacing and run fits and leaves creases like they were able to exploit right there. On second down now. It's Lindsey. Power. And he will fight his way into the end zone for a Bronco touchdown. 
Phillip Lindsay, his first touchdown of the new season. And the Broncos push further out in front. And on his way to the end zone, shedding the tackle, he would not be denied. That's what's called finishing the run, making sure you power your way through. One-on-one -on -one tackle, no running back wants to go to the bench and say, ah, I got stopped just short. McManus's point after is good, and the decision to just kick the extra point winds up successful. A drive there of just four plays, and it was capped off by a Philip Lindsay touchdown run. After the touchdown, here's McManus now to kick it away. And this will be a touchback as that sails over the end line. Here comes the Patriots offensive unit. They'll have it first here to begin the third quarter. And their halftime hole now even deeper. And they need a big drive here just to answer the first touchdown of the second half scored against them. They were down at the half. Now, as you mentioned, they're down a little bit bigger. But no time for discouragement. Just got to get back to it, right? Put your shoulder against the boulder and start pushing. And try and get back to where you were to start the half. Rush coming, and he's taken down. Now, we talk about players blitzing all the time. I often laugh and sometimes call it just straight-ahead pursuit. What a running start right back to the backfield for him. Yeah, it really didn't give anybody a chance to get up there and stop it. No, I mean, that's really, really difficult. You're asking a whole lot anyway, but when he gets that kind of a start and comes through clean, oftentimes the advantage definitely goes to the defensive player. Work to be done here on second and 16 after the sack. Brady now to throw. Got a man open. That's Harry. A good gain of nine before he's brought down at the 28. Now after the completion, we're going to get a timeout. An injured player. We'll get a report when we return to Foxborough. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Shotgun now for Brady. And a dump off to White. And this effort will not get it done. He stopped well short of the first down at the 29. Partner, I think that completion takes the definition of dink and dunk to a different level, doesn't it? It does, and the defense was right there, kind of played into their hands. And the punt team on now as this one sent away. Taking it about the 16. 51 yards on the punt there. And the Broncos take over. First down and 10. So here are the Broncos to take over on offense. They've got the lead right now. And last week, they were able to defeat the Atlanta Falcons here as they try to make it two victories in a row. Lock and the Broncos going to come up first and 10 at their own 26. Lock now on first down. And the coverage terrific there as that's knocked down and incomplete. He was trying to find Noah Fant, the tight end. And now it's second down. It's always a battle. Who's going to win on first down? The offense or the defense? Let's face it, if you've got the ball, four yards or more on first down is what you're aiming for. They tried to throw for it there. Nice effort to knock that one away and bring up second down. On second down, it's Lindsey. He finds an opening past the 40. That one good for 26 and a first down. Defense really kept him in check running the football in the first half. Maybe that'll be a spark for him here in half two. And so two words come to mind for me. Resilient, because he has to keep bouncing back after some limiting runs. And how about relentless? Keep going, knowing that you may pop one as he just did there. So into Pat's territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 48-yard line. On first and 10, here's Locke. That's caught over the middle by Fant. And they're able to work this to the 25 before it's all said and done. That's back-to-back -back plays of over 20 yards. 
his position, and he's listed as a tight end, but he certainly doesn't run like one, and that's what we're seeing more and more coming into the league, those guys who can run, make plays after the catch, and gain that additional yardage. And using that speed there to turn it into a pretty nice little game. 60 Pittsburgh. A first down carry for Henry. Now this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. A oh, lot to praise on this drive, obviously. I, I know you're seeing what I'm seeing. Those guys up front, they're getting it done. Doesn't matter what play is called, they are handling their business at the line of scrimmage and dominating right now on this drive. Again, it's Henry. And they'll bring him down at the 13-yard line. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. Third quarter, and you've got the lead. You're not ready to go into that four-minute offense to close the game out, but a running game can really benefit your team right now. Ready to break. On first down, lock. And it's caught. And he's brought down. A solid pickup of 13 sets him up first and goal. Completion was given up, but that's why you play zone defense, so that you can have people around the ball when it's caught, and you don't give up much run after the catch. 60 outlaw. Okay, just like that. Just like that. They look to throw. It's locked. And this is caught for a Bronco touchdown. Jeff Hireman. His first touchdown here of the new campaign. And the Broncos push further out in front. Good throw there, and I don't want to blow it too out of proportion, but he looks a lot more comfortable in his second season. You can tell he put the work in in the offseason, and what I mean by that is understanding the playbook. Not just the plays and how to execute them, but how to do it against a variety of defenses. Also understands his team better, what they can and cannot do. You can see the confidence rising in him as he plays. After the touchdown, here's McManus now to kick it away. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. So the Patriots coming out now. And down on the scoreboard, certainly needing to avoid what happened on the last drive, punting the football. Sense of urgency has to take over for them here. They know the score. They know the situation. And by the way, the punter no longer exists for their offense. That's how they have to treat this drive. They need points. Big time. And he'll be upended at the 28-yard line. Just a three-yard gain there. And this should be the final play before the quarter ends. Second and seven, Brady. And that would not to be. It's incomplete. So they couldn't hook up as time has now run out on this third quarter of play. Back now in Foxborough. It's Patriot football, but they trail here as we begin the fourth quarter. They head to the line facing a third and seven following the incompletion on second down. Here's Brady to throw. Open man is Gordon complete. And he's got the first down yardage before being taken down at midfield. A good pick up there, a 22. You cannot write these guys off just yet, not with a quarterback like that under center. You mean it actually crossed your mind with him running the team that you could actually maybe write this game off? Not yet. Not a chance. Not with him. We've seen it too many times. From midfield, here's Brady. Able to get this to Gordon. And he's able to take it across midfield before going out of bounds. The completion good for three, and it's second down. I know many people like to throw to the tight end, maybe in a little flex stack position because he creates mismatches with his size. But slot receivers do the same thing with their quickness, their speed, and their route running savvy. Throwing again on second down. Brady got Gordon open, completes it. That goes as a gain of 11 and a Patriot first down. 
Brady now. Six for six since coming back out of the locker room. It's first and ten. Brady to throw again. And he'll complete this one to Barrios. And he'll be brought down on the 30-yard line after a gain of six. A gain of six there on first. You got the big lead defensively. Willing to give them that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackling. Tackle them after the catch, inbounds, keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. Brady's throw there complete. And he's going to be taken down here with a penalty flag on the field. So a decent gain, but all for not on the penalty. It's too bad, isn't it? They were feeling pretty good about it. The only people celebrating, the guys who just gave up that play. Now they face a second and long following the holding penalty. Again, they'll throw with Brady. And that'll be incomplete. Took a pretty good shot as he tried to pull that one in. Couldn't hang on third down. Well, the trials and tribulations of being a quarterback in this league, it's tough. It's got to be wearing on him out there. Well, he has been sacked a number of times. He had an interception, so I'm going to give him a skosh of credit for hanging in there and trying to make something happen, despite the amount of pressure he's been under this entire game. Throwing now is Brady. And able to connect with Barrios. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. Call that a very strong gain of 24. Get that quarterback at all costs. Into the red zone. It's Brady. Got his man complete over the middle. That's Wells. And they work this near the five. He'll be stopped at the six. They get 10 more there, and I believe that'll be enough for another first down at will. First and goal, and they got to be thinking a chance to get right back into this football game. They'll try and run for it on first and goal. And he's in. Touchdown, Patriots. James White, his first touchdown of the new season. And the Patriots get a score closer. And there you go, nothing really too complex. Block, keep to your assignments, let them run it in, they did it. Fundamental football, good blocking, beats good tackling on that play, and result, touchdown. They go for just one here as it's up and good, and the lead down to 10, 24-14. Two scores down, three timeouts left, still a chance if they can somehow get this one back. And the Broncos are going to get the football. Well, fourth quarter, they felt like they needed the football back. Unfortunately, they couldn't get it. And I know we brought analytics into the game, and someone has said here that the data says that when a team's expecting an onside kick, 80% of the time, the team expecting it, they do actually recover the ball, which is what we saw here. I just wonder if that number is much more of a anecdotal type of a number. Kind of like when the coaches tell us, well, when you score on special teams, 93% of the time you win the game. I'm still waiting to see that number is empirical. Devin McCourty brings him down. And when do they start thinking about burning these timeouts? They've got all three still defensively. To me, you have to start right now. Here's the time. And that means you've got to stop them on defense, not give up the yardage. Use your timeouts in order to get the ball back and try and score yourself. But now is the time to start using those timeouts. And keep in mind, it'll also stop the clock at the two-minute warning. Another nice pick up through the air, and I think a lot of people might expect them to run the ball in this situation, Brandon, but with this lead, they're electing to throw the football. Swings, slants, quick outs, things that they consider safe. An extra corner comes on now for the Patriots. D on third down. Locke going to try and throw on third down. And able to find Deshaun Hamilton complete. And he's going to get this inside the 30. A 10-yard pickup, and it's enough for a Broncos first down. Ready, ready. So it's Bronco football as we get your reset here. And you'd have to figure they're just looking to burn these final two minutes away and get out of here with a victory. They'll run on first down. Lindsey. 
And now right out of the two-minute break, we'll get a timeout used defensively with a minute 56 to go. The run got four. Now they deal with a second and six. Another run by Lindsey. And on this one, he'll get to the 15, right at the 15-yard line. Whistles now in a timeout. So defensively, they burn it here with 151 left. Not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and 10. Now Locke. He completes this to Sutton. The Patriots will take their third and final timeout as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. Another yard would probably put this thing in the books. It's second and one. This is the fullback, Janovich. And he is into the end zone for a Denver touchdown. Andy Janovich. His first touchdown here of the new campaign. And the Broncos push further out in front. Looking like they're well on their way to a 2-0 start. All smiles right now on that sideline, isn't it? As well there should be. It's hard to win a game in the NFL. We hear it all the time. We know that it's difficult. But guess who's smiling? But inside is thinking 24-hour rule because we're going to have to play again next week. Boss man. Oh, without a doubt. The head coach, <laughs> he wants them to feel good, but at the same time, find a way to keep improving. After the touchdown, here's McManus now to kick it away. And that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback. Now the Patriots offense, they work their way back out onto the field. They're down big here late. I don't know, you just one last drive here for pride? Some people like to do that. I remember playing for a guy once we were down huge. It's almost a coach, what do you want to call? He just waved a hand like, who cares? Let's Make get out of here and do something some other time. But some teams like to do something at the end to feel a little bit better yeah. as, they continue to, as they continue to move forward. Yeah, probably just want to put this one behind them. The reception, good for seven. It's third down. Now Brady. That's complete. It's Gordon. And he gets this up across the 35 before he's out of bounds. Seven catches for him now in this last one, a first down. Clock management, definitely critical here if they want to get back in this game. Absolutely agreed. They have to up the tempo in this case, down a couple of scores, want to make sure they have a chance to win this ball game. On first down, Brady goes underneath here to White. Six yards on the pickup, and it's a second down. They're going to need to get up and set in a hurry. Gets it to Gordon. And he's able to take it across midfield before going out of bounds. Seven yards there and a first down. Brady's got his guys first and ten, and he's hit on all five of his pass attempts on this drive so far. Now Brady. Throw to the right here to Gordon. Well, he is out of bounds, but not before he's inside the 30. An excellent pickup of 20 yards. On first and 10, here's Brady. Incomplete, but a penalty flag is down in the backfield. Let's get the call. Umpire through the flag Still usually always in. indicates holding, and that's what we've got. And you know, depending on their positioning, where you are on the field, the umpires get different responsibilities, but always, always making sure no one's holding. They're backed up here with a first and 20 now after the holding penalty. Now Brady again. Got a man, it's Barrios complete. He's going to go out of bounds, but he takes this one down just shy of the 20. 17 yards on the play as they try to eat into this 17-point deficit. They go play action for White. Now it's Brady. He's going to take a shot for the end zone. And he can't hang on. That's definitely going to be one he wishes he had back. 
Incomplete in the end zone. The eighth play of the drive coming up. It's third and three. Again, it's Brady. He's going to let it go deep for the end zone. And incomplete, almost intercepted. Had a great shot of picking that off in the end zone. And now fourth down. Now the offense is not leaving the field. They're going to stay out and go for it on fourth and three. Brady to throw for it on fourth down. And he's going to have the hook up to Izzo. And he picks up the first down yardage as he takes this one down to the 15. They're able to keep the drive alive seven yards that time, and the decision to go for it proves to be a good one. So this one will wind up a Denver victory, and they were buoyed, Charles, by a big second half to put this one on ice. And I know a lot of people watching this one were thinking to themselves, I'll bet halftime was really interesting. Probably took the paint off the walls with some of the words that were said. <laughs> But I get the sense that it was much more of the adjustments they made. They came in with a game plan that we saw that didn't work in the first half. They made the adjustments necessary, went away from that, and then they got it together, got a spark, and then took off. It's really nice to watch in the second half.